coming up. What an excellent day for curse words. Well, howdy folks, and welcome to Minute 36 of The Exorcist Minute, a show where we endeavor to examine, extrapolate, and excavate The Exorcist minute by terrifying minute. My name is Lester Ryan Clark. And I'm Keenan Diaz. And we'll be your holy guides on this journey through what some have called the scariest movie of all time. Okay, so our minute begins in the middle of Chris saying, you think I should take her to a psychiatrist? And it ends with Dr. Klein saying, she advised me to keep my fingers away from... And I'm already uh... dreading the next episode <laughs> where I gotta say, so our minute begins with... hey yo, Hey, because uh, we all know... We all know it's one of the popular lines of the movie. Uh, even if you don't know, you can probably guess. Um, I'll give you a hint. Reagan doesn't have a Butterfinger bar. Um, <laughs> what if she did? What if she, what, what, Kenan, what if the entire movie, all 36 minutes so far, was an ad for Butterfingers? Right? I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> we cut, uh, you know, we cut to Reagan, right? She's sitting up in the hospital bed, right? She's got a Butterfinger. She takes a bite and she says, everybody better keep their goddamn fingers away from my goddamn Butterfinger. <laughs> And then Butterfingers is like, eh, let's go with Bart Simpson. He's a little less controversial. <laughs> um, did I tell you, we, we weren't really, were you allowed to watch Simpsons when you were a kid? No, I was not. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't either yeah, <laughs> at yeah. first. So neither of us, wow. And then <laughs> South Park um, came on and by then my parents had forgotten about the Simpsons. Yeah. And then they were like, you're not allowed to watch South Park. <laughs> you know, it's like you look at the Simpsons now and it's like compared to like, you know, the stuff that uh, – God, I feel so old. There's stuff that these kids watch today. <laughs> like what? Like, Besides well, South know, Park. Like, like you said, South Park or Family Guy or you mm-hmm. know, like any of that stuff. It's like, wow, Simpsons is what was relatively tame yeah. um, comparatively. Yeah. Uh, these hey, kids and their euphorias, their Zendayas. And their- <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so uh, Butterfingers, uh, if you want to partner up with a show about The Exorcist, um, nobody just, better lay a finger on our goddamn on our butter goddamn fingers. Butter, yeah. <laughs> um, you I mean, know, basic, uh, oh. Millhouse, yeah, uh, was invented for the Butterfingers commercials. What? And then he became, yeah, his first appearance is on the Butterfingers commercials, and then he became a character regular on The Simpsons. Oh my god, <laughs> that's I'm, so. Millhouse is the Reese's Pieces of. <laughs> Of the Simpsons. Yeah, that's right. Because, <laughs> yeah, folks, Reese's Pieces was invented for E.T. Wow. Right. So Millhouse first appears in the in the Butterfingers commercial. Wow. People, wow. I'm, on, I'm on like four Simpsons, four or five Simpsons Facebook uh, groups. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like I, I had joined too many cat groups, you know, mm-hmm. and so then I guess I started adding Simpsons ones. So I can't remember which one of them, but one of them is like, who's who's your favorite Simpsons character, which is a really mm-hmm. hard question. I was yeah. like, oh, God, is mine Millhouse? That would be sad, but appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought, you know, who my favorite is Gil. I think oh, Gil is Gil. my favorite. Gil is like Jack Lemmon from Glengarry Glen Ross, but, but, yeah, um, yeah. but <laughs> in The Simpsons. <laughs> so you managed so, – so – you didn't go with Millhouse because that's a sad choice. <laughs> so then you went with probably the only character <laughs> who could be sadder than Millhouse. I guess so, but I don't feel like I'm like Gil. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying that at all. Guys, I'm not saying that that's at all. That's what I think. No. I think I am like Millhouse. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, I think I like Millhouse because I am very much like Millhouse. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. No, I like Millhouse. I, yeah. <laughs> but why do they have the bull Bart? Why did I have the bowl? <laughs> oh. Oh, my mom says I'm cool. <laughs> oh, that's the best. See, yeah. I say that all the time. <laughs> and I forget it's a millhouse. Yeah. Oh, oh, millhouse. So anyways, everything's then, coming up millhouse. Everything's coming up millhouse. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody likes millhouse. No. But I was like, yeah, okay. But, but guys, Butterfingers, I'm saying, like, yeah, if you want to partner up with our show, mm-hmm. I, like, I, I basically wrote your first commercial. So, we, you know, we we could use you. Yeah, we could. <laughs> or yeah. I mean, oh wait, that sounds desperate. Uh, you could use us. Yeah, you could. I mean, you like, need I, us. Like, how could you? How could you not want to want to jump on this train? <laughs> um, or I guess, I, I guess Keenan actually, the more obvious one would be Snickers, right? Like the two priests would would give Reagan a Snickers bar at the end uh, of the movie, and you know she turned back to normal because you're not you're not you when you're hungry, right? <laughs> Guys, where are all where are all of our sponsors? Why don't they want to touch this franchise? Right. Keep your fingers away from my goddamn franchise. 
oh my god which is just left and right um Okay, but we're not even there yet. Uh, we don't know what Dr. Klein is going to say. <laughs> right? In this minute, we are still ignorant and innocent. So let's get back to the top of this minute with Chris asking whether or not she should take Reagan to a psychiatrist. Now, in this book, uh, this is not the first time that she has suggested this. Uh, she has actually already called her regular doctor back in L.A. Uh, asking for him to refer Reagan to a psychiatrist. And it's here we find out a little more about Chris's immense distrust of doctors because before meeting her L.A. doctor, she had had a son, Jamie, mm. who had developed an infection and the doctors at the time had prescribed something that ended up killing her son. Um, but I thought it'd be good to understand a bit more uh, uh, where Chris is coming from and where she is right now. Even uh, though this film effectively says that uh, Jamie, her her first son, never existed, uh, we never we never hear about Chris having any other child. Um, but I I thought it would add to our story and our character study since we're looking at both, and I didn't want to pass it up, especially because if we are going by the book. This is one of the big tragedies in Chris's past, and it really does explain why Chris is so wary of these smug, pill-pushing men. Like, they already killed one of her children. And wow. so now this new doctor, this guy, Dr. Klein, uh, this is not her regular doctor. It, it took her years to uh, go back to doctors and develop a relationship with this one LA doctor. And now this new doctor, Dr. Samuel Klein or, or Harold Klein, whatever, I already don't trust him, mm -hmm. uh, just nonchalantly uh, prescribes Ritalin after admitting uh, to Chris that he doesn't know for sure what's up with Reagan. He's like, at least that's what we think. We don't know for sure. And he writes this little prescription, and then he sits back in the chair, puts his hand behind his, uh, his head, and is like, ah, I do good work. Smug motherfucker. Um, <laughs> and yeah, like I said, this all started when Chris called her L.A. doctor and said, hey, I need a psychiatrist for Reagan. And like in the book, both these doctors like just love shitting all over psychiatry. Like it's funny. Whenever Chris suggests psychiatry to these doctors, like they react as if she had said exorcism. Mm -hmm. Like – psychiatrist that's all mumbo jumbo fakery you silly broad and then later spoilers they're the ones who who suggest exorcism and the exorcist who is also a psychiatrist says no yeah wow that's quite a that's quite a backstory that's really yeah. interesting so um that's not in the script so bladdy has decided or acceded to the studio or whatever that that, that we don't have time for that or yeah that we've condensed it um Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure that that's, that's the fun part. I think as we're looking at these to, to like do the thought experiment, like is the movie mm -hmm. better or worse or lacking or, or whatever for not having that? I'm not sure. You could see mm -hmm. how, how, how that might help inform us. But again, you know, we love this movie. It's an excellent film. Yeah. And, and, uh, I've never been like, I don't know why Chris doesn't trust doctors. I don't know why mm -hmm. <laughs> Chris doesn't like that. Right. We, we get it even without that, but yeah, yeah. Well, that's quite a that's quite a formidable. That's quite a um, sorry, formative, that's quite yeah. a formative experience for a character to have. That, that's not yeah. like changing their name from Harold to Samuel. Right. That's a big, big thing. Yeah, yeah, and it like it it certainly adds like a whole lot more weight. I mean, I guess I guess it's up to the audience, right? If they've mm -hmm. already read the book, or if they or if they know about this, um, you know, this other child that uh, that Chris McNeil lost, right? Like it's it's their choice of whether or not they want to. Like, um, you know, think about that while they're watching this movie. It certainly adds a lot more weight to Chris's decision about, uh, you know, whether or not to keep her daughter with these doctors as they're doing all these tests on her. And, uh, you know, as they seem just to be like, so, I don't know, like, like, just like cavalier about, um, you know, this, this life in their hands, you know, um, and, and just kind of like inspecting it with this kind of like detached kind of, um, scientific like hmm isn't it interesting and not not like you know um giving it the uh i don't know um the empathy it it needs mm -hmm. yeah but yeah think about it like so geez so in the book it is chris loves reagan so much mm -hmm. partially because she has lost a son before right. and then in the which is that sounds great right that sounds mm -hmm. that sounds like a wonderful character and then in mm -hmm. the movie it's chris is so worried because reagan is the only person that she's ever had in her life that also mm. sounds really great too, right? right. <laughs> so, so how do you make those decisions? That's a tough thing that that artists have to deal with all the time. Yeah, equally heavy stuff, right? Right. There. Yeah. Mm. Um. So, yeah, 
All of this to say, Chris is doing her best, but she is alone. Remember those themes, right? Um, she is in doubt. She is isolated and she is moving slowly but surely toward despair. We have only a small amount of hope. Uh, Keenan, do you know the German word for small? Mm -mm. Es ist klein. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Mm. Eine kleine Nacht on music. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. so I don't know. I, probably not intentional, but, uh, you know, very interesting. Now, his answer to her question Right. Because he's like, yeah, like, like, why the math? Like, why, you know, or, or no, uh, his answer to her question is like, do you think I should take my daughter to a psychiatrist is to ask another question. Um, he asks Chris if Reagan has ever been known to swear. And Chris says no. And we know this is true because, uh, you know, by this time, 36 minutes in, we have seen enough of Reagan to know that, yeah, she's not the type of kid to swear. Mm -hmm. um, and here, Klein gets a little bashful. Um, he can't. He can't just outright repeat what Reagan said to him. And Chris has to like press and ask what she said specifically. Keenan, <laughs> do you remember uh, that show Inside the Actor Studio with James oh, Lipton? Oh yes, 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 James Lipton. Mm. Mm -hmm. I loved. I loved that show so much. Um, it, like it made me think of at the end. Um, the host James Lipton. He asks um, the guests. You know, and these are all like you know uh, actors. You know, um, you know famous actors. We got. Um, uh, uh, Robert Downey Jr. We've got uh, 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 Robert De Niro. We got uh, uh, God damn it! What's it? Oh, uh, I've uh, seen so many. I've seen Kathy know, Bates and Kathy um, Bates and uh, Tom Hanks and Tom um, Hanks, yeah. Al Pacino. Mm -hmm. There we go. That was the, I was I was almost about to shout hoo ha, um, <laughs> you know hoo ha, Mister Hoo ha, <laughs> Mister Hoo ha. Um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and like and all of these all all of these uh, famous famous actors, and he interviews them. Um, and at the end, he asked them this series of questions, right? Like, you know, like, um, you know, what does God say to you when he's at the pearly gates or mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Um, but one of the things that he asks is, what's your favorite curse word? Right. Um, and it's always the men who get bashful and they choose they choose a really lame curse word. Um, and the women always choose a really good one. Uh, and, and the men are always just like really shy. And, you know, like here we have the, kind of the same thing. We have like Chris is basically having – uh, to walk Dr. Klein to the right word because he can't do it himself. Um, and in the book, he's like, he's like, does she say, does she say shit or fuck her? You know, and Dr. <laughs> Klein's like, well, yes, she used that vocabulary. And it's like, God. Yeah. In the script, there's actually a line a little bit where, where, um, where that's cut out of the movie or, or they mm. didn't get to it where Chris says, Hey, come on, I'm a grown up. What'd she say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, like Would you spend too much time around kids, Dr. Klein, maybe. Yeah, really. Um, well, my yeah, the one that I remember from that question that James Lipton asked was Tom Hanks, and Tom Hanks said uh, his favorite curse word was horse shit, which is different huh. from bullshit. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it is different from bullshit, isn't it? <laughs> Do you have a favorite? Oh, me? Well, let's see. Oh, are you going to get bashful? Um, no, <laughs> no, actually, no, I, I really like bullshit. <laughs> you say bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I went through a period when I was maybe 12 or something where I would say rats and nuts <laughs> and, and mean yeah. it. And my, my cousins would make fun of me and they'd, they'd say, I can't believe you. It's so funny. Say rats again. They go, rats. <laughs> um, but I think mine is, is fuck shit, like sort of a, like a combination. Like you stub your toe. Oh, fuck shit. <laughs> Keenan, I have never heard that combination in really? my what? life. <laughs> fuck shit? Yeah, sort of as a one word combination. I've heard shit fuck. <laughs> never fuck shit. Wow. Yeah. Dang. Okay. Well, I mean, I like I'm now I'm just gonna have to be listening out for it. Like uh, you know, whenever we're in the same room. Whenever I stub my toe in front of you. Yeah. Mm, can right. we can we talk about the way the ratings worked at this time period? So we're talking yes, about yes, swear let's words. Do. Mm. So oh geez, I'm not sure exactly where to start. So in the classical era, there wasn't a rating system. Um mm. so we're talking about like in the thirties, from nineteen thirty four until like nineteen sixty seven, sixty eight. There, okay, there was the something else. Era. There was called the it was called the production code. Okay. Um, sometimes it's called the Hayes code mm -hmm. because that was the man who was in charge of it during its formative years. Will Hayes, mm -hmm. he was the he was the postmaster general who was put in charge of this um, enforcement office. And gotcha. so, like the rating system, it's not the law or anything. It's an mm -hmm. industry standard. So the the studios got together to put together um, censorship standards, basically. Mm -hmm. And the idea was like, okay, we're going to censor ourselves because in other countries, if um, if the government doesn't like what the movie industry does, they just censor the movies or they take right. over the movie industry. So yeah. we're going to like protect ourselves and, and just say mm -hmm. as a group, all of us like pinky swear together, um, no more boobies, 
because there had mm. been boobs in films before 1934. Mm. Um, you could see butts in All Quiet on the Western Front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so no more boobs, no more butts, no more... Um, no more premarital sex, no more gay people, get rid of all the gay people, um, no more right. interracial relationships, um, no swearing, and then um, the violence has to change. And then it also had wow. things in it that were like, um, you know, the that dictated the endings of films. So if you were a bad guy, you had to go to jail or to die. Hmm. So, so that was just sort of baked into the industry that the industry said, okay, we can only have happy endings now. Interesting. So that was the old system. And then uh, that uh, this is beyond the scope of this movie, but that collapsed gradually from the 50s mm -hmm. on. It just right. gotten weaker and weaker and weaker. And so then by the mid 1960s, studios were just ignoring it. And they put out mm -hmm. movies like Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? You know that one? Right. Yes. It's mm -hmm. just like a bunch of swearing. And, and there's um, um, lines like monkey nipples, I believe, is in mm -hmm. <laughs> Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf and screw you and words like that. And they're just like, OK, well, effectively, we don't have a code anymore because mm. now people just get away with this. So they came up right. with the um, at the time, the MPAA rating system, which is the Motion Picture Association of America rating system. Right. And so it was G, M, R and X the x rating right yeah mm. and they were tweaking that so then by the time that the extras came out um they had changed the rating system a little bit but it was still g p g r and x okay and the exorcist was um was you know very tough movie <laughs> yeah, <laughs> i don't know if yeah. you know this mm. i don't know if you know lester it's it's a pretty yeah. out there movie and it's, it did uh, not you know, it, it, it made me uh you know loosen my collar a little bit you know <laughs> But it, it a... didn't get an X rating. It got an R rating. Hmm. And there were a lot of people complaining about that. And and there was a lot of um, talk about, geez, well, this rating system has basically let kids into the exorcist, right? So it was R, you can get into the movie with your parent. But an X huh. was no kids allowed, which is what it is today, right? There's we Today we have R, which is if your parent buys you the ticket, you can get in, or your parent or guardian. And then we have, it's now called the NC-17 rating. And just no, right. your parent can't sign you into the movie, right? Mm. So kids could get into The Exorcist, and there were a lot of kids who saw The Exorcist. And a lot of people had accused basically the MPAA of saying, well, like, oh, this is a Warner Brothers major picture, so we're going to loosen our restrictions and let kids get in, um, which is still a, comp a complaint that people have that they that they do today that they loosen it for um for movies that are important from the industry right yeah we need more we need more eyeballs on the screen we need more tickets we need more yeah so can't you just look the other way <laughs> and there's <laughs> been there's been times when like um zoolander got an r rating i think it, it was because there's like an orgy at the end of zoolander and oh. then they went and petitioned it and ben Siller was like guys it's a comedy. And they're like, oh, you're right. <laughs> so it's a PG-13 rated movie. So you crazy things like that. That's like, like, yeah. well, you know, why, why should this be? And, um, you know, Parker and Stone, who did South Park and uh, Team right. America. Right. They said that when they did um, Orgasmo as an independent film, mm -hmm. they were told this is an NC-17 rated movie. And they were like, well, what can we do to make it an R? You know, we're not intending to make something that's not seeable. And they right. said, you have to figure out your own. And then when they went and did Team America with uh, Under Paramount as a, as a studio film, mm -hmm. um, they were rated NC-17. But they got with them a list of, of changes. Uh, you know, the MPA gave them the list to tell, tell mm -hmm. them what to change so they can get an mm -hmm. R rating. So interesting. Yeah. So anyways, the exorcist is R, which means kids could get in. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, at that point, it's like, well, what's the point of this X rating? <laughs> if if yeah. you can get into the exorcist, I don't know why a, right. a child would go into the exorcist. But as I said, mm. like my father went and saw it as part of his high school, um, his high school um, uh, church group, <laughs> his youth yeah. group took him. Yeah. Church. Do you think that could have had anything to do with it? Do you think the church specifically had a hand in is like, no, 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 no. Keep it R because like we need to push this on, oh, you on know, I'm not the Catholic sure. youth. I haven't seen that specifically, but you know, oh, I was trying not to get too deep into the weeds of the production code before, but one of the reasons why the production code, the first uh, group of censorship rules got put into place was because of the Catholic church. Mm. Um, so it, it was the case that the Catholic church um, – would have sermons, um, you know, you know how they, I think, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure what they're called, but, you know, in your sermons, there's like announcements every week about, oh, let's think of um, this, one of our parishioners sister back home is sick and let's pray for her, you know? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a sort I know of, what I don't, I don't know the name for yeah, that. Yeah, there's yeah, like I an announcement section at a Catholic mm -hmm. sermon. Um, yeah. And so part of that was also included um, which movies were coming out that week oh. <laughs> and which movies uh, Catholics should not see. 
So they had they had ratings of A, B, and C, and I forget mm-hmm. if A is the worst or C is the worst. But it would be like, oh, this movie from Paramount this week—that's a C. You are not going to see that. It is it is not appropriate for you. Oh my gosh! So there were these large cell protests or boycotts, rather, from Catholics. So they they were the the main thing that the studio system was responding to because Catholics, as a group, were boycotting films and then potentially could boycott whole studios if they were like, you know. No more Warner's Brothers movies. They're all disgusting. <laughs> no, you know. So, yeah, they were responding specifically to the Catholic boycotts from the, the League of Decency, which is sometimes called the Catholic League of Decency. Right, right. But for The Exorcist, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, that's a problem with the rating but system. But The Exorcist was all above board. Like, we can get, the, get your kids. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure because, you know, I've talked to my dad about this. Like, like how did this happen that your group was doing this? Um, so I'm not sure how organized that was, right? Because it was my dad as a, whatever, 16 or 17-year-old being told to go. I don't. So he wasn't mm-hmm. privy to... Did this come, you know, throughout the entire diocese? Did the cut this come? Did the cardinal, you know, you know, did the cardinal of Honolulu know that this was happening? Like, or yeah. was this a nationwide thing? Um, I haven't been able to find that. I mean, ever since you said that, and I think that was in our very, very first episode, right. talking about like it's a, it was almost required viewing for for young uh, Catholic boys and girls to come and watch this horrible kind of like <laughs> um, you know depiction of the gross, like like very like. Uh, you know, graphic. There we go. That's the word I was looking yeah. for. Like this graphic depiction of, uh, you know, of demonic possession. Um, but like I, like ever since you said that, I like I seem to remember that being a thing as well. Just like in my Catholic upbringing, this was like, like if you were a young Catholic kid, it was okay, not even just okay, but encouraged to watch this film, which was filled with all manner of things that you would normally not be allowed to. Uh, look at Mm -hmm. had it been included in another film say like and i almost like i can i can see how that's like almost like a like a double whammy of uh of temptation it's like hey you know this uh this this film that has like all of this nasty gross horrific uh you know scary stuff that you know you're normally not allowed to watch um you can watch this one (laughs) and just having having kids being like oh really that's like that's like you know like giving them a beer and it's like hey you can have a sip of this you know (laughs) and it's like oh of course i'm gonna go you know like you know take a sip of this beer (laughs) as long as you think about hell and it's like like specifically drinking beer to like teach you of the dangers of drinking beer um <laughs> and so it's gonna you're gonna get a hangover the next day and you're like oh my god and it's like yeah you'll never do that again will you it's like no i'm never playing with the ouija board i'm never not going to church i'm gonna go to church every sunday now <laughs> Yeah, so this was this was seen by people. Oh, yeah, I'd love to hear more, you know, documentary evidence. Oftentimes it's hard for us to find like scholarship on how people watched movies, right? Like mm-hmm. like there's a lot of scholarship on the movie itself or how movies are made. And there's this big gap a lot of times in like, well, what did people think when they saw like everyday people, right? Because you mm-hmm. don't just go around polling people, at least the back in the old days before like Rotten Tomato or message boards or that sort of thing. Where right, people can right. describe it. So um, we, we're really lucky that we have a couple of documentaries of, of um, what it was like to watch The Exorcist in theaters. Um, yes. You know, people queuing up and, and reporters asking people, like, why did you leave the movie? Like, mm-hmm. what was it that made you leave the movie? And and then usually it's them also saying, like, and I'm going to go back tomorrow. Right, right. <laughs> I was so um, disturbed. I had to leave, but I'm going to be back. Yeah. And uh, folks, what Keenan is referring to, um, there is uh, – uh, and you can see it on YouTube. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. The the exact title is uh, Cultural Impact of the Exorcist 1973. Um, and it seems to be like it's it's been up there for like eight years, so you can, uh, you it can seems safe. go watch it. Yeah, it's, yeah, about, it, uh, it's a really good documentary. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, you know, it, it looks it, it again. We don't normally have movie crews outside of theaters <laughs> looking at that, the way lines work in movie theaters or, or interviewing the staff. And they interview some of the staff at the um, the Westwood film, uh, the Westwood theaters, I think near UCLA, because it's like mm-hmm. the Fox or the Bruin. I can't remember. What. So it's like, oh, I've yeah. been in that theater. I watch Gravity there. It's so nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so there's that X rating and then just to, just to cap off that X rating idea, right? So there were, there were movies that were rated X that was no kids allowed. Like Midnight mm-hmm. Cowboy was mm-hmm. this movie from a couple years previous to this with John Voight and Dustin Hoffman that won, um, best, uh, picture at the Oscars. And that's the only X rated film to win best picture. Um, and then eventually they, do you know why they got rid of the X rating? I n- no, I don't like, I'm, okay, I, I was waiting to kind of like jump in and, and like admit how, mm-hmm 
ignorant I am of this of this whole oh, rating no, system? Because like I thought, like whenever somebody says X rating, mm-hmm. like I'm thinking of a specific type of movie. What type of um, movie, Lester? <laughs> I'm thinking of no, no, no. I'm thinking of like adult films. Like yes, that. So when you're talking about and and no, it's true. Like you you mentioning that the exorcist was um you know people were pushing to make it an x rated mm-hmm. uh film or to or to label it as such um i i remember that too and i just remember like reading that and being like well hang on that's not i thought i thought x rated was like only for like adult films uh, you know of the like you know pornographic, pornographic variety pornographic nature and sure there is a scene with a crucifix in there right. but like this is like a cinematic like thing uh, you know, there's a, there's a story and I mean, not to say that there's not stories in you know, those <laughs> other films, but I, like, you know what I mean? Like, I just like, I thought X rated meant something very, very specific. Right. And I'm thinking you're telling me Keenan, you're about to tell me that like it, it, it wasn't always the case, but it, it ended up that way. It wasn't always the case and it ended up that way. So the X rating was invented by the Motion Picture Association of America. Hmm. So this was, um, you know, something created by this industry group to mean no children allowed. Uh, so hmm. no one under 17 allowed. Um, and then what's happening at the same time in the 1970s, it's a part of a film history that I'm really fascinated with because hmm. it's not that long ago, um, but it seems this, this seems so unfathomable today so Mm. a bunch of the movie theaters downtown were failing in the early 1970s because we had people moving out of the cities and going to suburbs and and basically the only people who were left downtown where all the original movie theaters were were poor people uh black people and queer people Mm. right that's who lived downtown so Mm. these these theaters were all failing and then all of a sudden in downtown areas and major cities you know on what used to be really thriving neighborhoods we Mm. had these empty theaters and um, there's a couple options that could happen, like in Back to the Future, when uh, Marty McFly goes, when he lives in Hill Valley in the 80s, the movie theater is a church, right? Hmm. So he goes past and, and it says like, oh, come for church service. And then he goes right. back in town uh, in time and he's like, oh, this was a movie theater. Like it used to be hmm. an actual movie theater. Um hmm. So, you know, they would do things like that where they would convert the space into something else, mm. um, into a legitimate theater or to a, like, I mean, a stage theater sorry, right, right. Uh, or like or like a church or some kind of space. And sometimes mm. they would turn into porno theaters where they would just show mm. real porno like on the street corners of you of neighbors that used to be thriving places. Right. right. So they would show real porn in real theaters like in mm. you could see this in Taxi Driver. Right. When they go to the um, the movie theater downtown. I don't know if it's in Times Square specifically, but they mm. go to, you know, Times Square had porno theaters to replace mm. the regular theaters. Um, and so, you know, we have this new X rating that promises you things. It promises you content that um, wasn't possible in the old production code system. Right? right. So in the old system, you couldn't have movies about sex. You couldn't have drugs. You couldn't have swearing mm. or boobs or butts. So now mm. the X rating promised you stuff that you could get. That was mm. the kind of thing that was more realistic and, you know, really reflected the world. So people would be interested in seeing X ratings. And so the porn industry would start advertising their films and they'd say, well, you kids, you like X rated films. What about triple x rated films mm. and they would advertise their films as x or double x or triple x and that would just that just made up marketing copy wow, but it's like three times as more as exactly many x's. it's three times as x and and i don't know how many x it takes to to, to match an r like the exorcist yeah. <laughs> but let's say a lot <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah it was it was a marketing thing and so um x rated b- became more synonymous with porn films and um mm. in this golden age of porn that um some of it was art, like um, Andy Warhol made movies in the golden age of porn. And right. some of it was, you know, was not art. It was porn, yeah. porn, porn. Yeah, X, X, X. So, yeah, they they basically um, they basically took away that rating from the legitimate rating system and made it untenable for them to keep the X rating. So they changed it to NC-17. Interesting. OK. And that's why, yeah, I kind of like like do a double take when people was like, oh yeah, they were, they were trying to make uh, the exorcist an X rated. It's like, well, no, it's like, hey, like that doesn't make any sense. Right. Um, but now it does. I see. But like, huh. yeah, Midnight Cowboy was X, a clockwork orange is X, right? They're not, oh, they're not yeah, pornographic, but they're inappropriate for children. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. so now, now there is no X. So in 1990, I think they changed it from X to NC 17. Okay. Wait. So, so what is clockwork orange now? Does it retain its rating from like when it first got rated or? Oh, that's a good question. Well, you know, the rating system, it, it has this feeling like it's a law, right? Like it's a health inspector who marks you at your restaurant as an A or a B. Right. And it's written in stone. It's written in stone. Change. Yeah. But actually the studios have to pay the MPA to get rating. 
to get a rating. Okay. So mm-hmm. like independent films often don't have them because they don't have the money to do that. It's some fee. So the, the, the studios can go back and get their films re-rated, which they have done. So I think Midnight Cowboy and Cockroach Orange are, are now, but yeah, it doesn't just stay with them as an X. Right. Interesting. Which is what, like, you know, our, our language is so weird. We have like, like the letter X is like some synonymous and it's in the word sex. And, but it's, <laughs> oh, no, like, it's, 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 so that's where I thought I was like, oh yeah, it makes perfect sense. Right. Adult <laughs> movies would be rated X. Right. Um, but then like, also it's in the word, the exorcist. Right. And it's like people making, it's like, it's like, oh yeah, they're going to rate the exorcist X. And it's like, well, that would actually be a, you know, pretty streamlined little ad there. You got your rating in the title and it's right. The Exorcist. I wonder what that's rated. You know. But, the, we, you know, they put the X in Christmas, which just means Christ. X just means Christ. Uh, so. yes. Oh, my gosh. So we're saying that like, so uh, under this new rating system, that um, it's an X rating if it's like a really religious film. Right. If it's very Christian. Oh, my God. So The Exorcist fits again. <laughs> One of the most spiritually relevant films yes, yes. I've ever made. But also one of the most um, uh, graphic. Sheesh. Yeah, it's like Passion of the Christ. <laughs> yeah, wow, how that didn't get an X rating. Uh, oh my god. Um, so <laughs> I was worried because there was there's not a lot um, to to like uh, talk about in in this in the seconds of this minute. Yeah, it's a dialogue um, heavy piece. Yeah, uh, but we got yeah we got there. We did it. But um, you know he. Um, he does. He crosses over to close this door, right? After disorder of the nerves, after all this stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But so it works there. It functions as like, okay, I'm going to close. I'm going to close this door to talk to you about your daughter's behavior and her swearing. Mm-hmm. But remember, there's an open door <laughs> that we've passed through. So it feels right. Like, like of course, we, I'm only noticing this, looking at it and tearing it apart yeah. piece by piece. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels completely right that he's going to be so embarrassed that, that to explain to this woman that his daughter is swearing, that he mm-hmm. goes and crosses this door that he came through and closes it. But right. the door that we came through as the camera, which, of course, we don't right. notice. It fe- it's supposed to feel like we're just moving through the wall. Right. You know? That door doesn't exist anymore. doesn't exist, like right? It. So that door is just wide open in the <laughs> hall as he's saying this. So. It's cut to okay. So those two kids, like um, you know, it's 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 time to go, right? Mom and mom and the two kids are walking down the hall, and you know, conscientious Dr. Klein, he closed that door, so we don't have to worry about it. But just like I just want to see another camera angle where it's like she advised me to keep her fingers away from my goddamn cunt, and like just like we cut to they are right in the in the frame of that doorway. They're like. Dr. Klein. Mom's got, yeah, mom's got the 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 hands over the the two kids' ears, right? You know. It's like, oh my goodness. Is that Chris McNeil? In the- <laughs> Star of stage and screen, Chris McNeil. Yeah. You know, I was just reading about the night Howard left. <laughs> yes. In Photoplay. Have you read it? It's it's in the it's in the lobby. Like there's like a bunch of copies. God. We heard your daughter has a disorder of the nerves. <laughs> Yeah. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so uh, one last thing, uh, Keenan. It. So, after we've, you know, after after talking about um, the rating system and the evolution of, uh, you know, what's appropriate and what's age appropriate and inappropriate in these movies, how shocking is this then about the idea of Reagan swearing like that? Because, uh, folks, remember, we have not actually heard reagan swear yet right so this scene well actually no it's in the next minute but like we know we know what's coming guys um (laughs) it like this is the beginning of a conversation where we're going to hear that reagan has just uttered this like like huge like taboo swear word so we're not even hearing her do it this is all hearsay the doctor is saying that she said this thing Mm -hmm. and like how like if if I'm back in 1973, if I'm in that crowded theater, it, like is everybody around me going to go, huh? or are are they going to like chuckle a little bit, or like what's going to be like the reaction in 1973 of not not even seeing this daughter or this this girl say it, but just like hearing the doctor say that she said it. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it was shocking. It's probably the mm-hmm. first time you hear it in a movie. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? So like Midnight Cowboy is this X-rated film that was a big hit and it won Best Picture in 1969. Mm-hmm. And, but it doesn't have the F word in it. So in in mm-hmm. the next year, there's a movie called MASH, 
mm-hmm. where they improvise an F word because during this football game and, and they like drop, I forget what it is, but they, they mess up in a play and they say, fuck. And that's the mm-hmm. first time you hear the F word in, mm-hmm. um, in a movie. So it's not even in the first X rated best picture winner. <laughs> so, wow. you know, and obviously things had, um, evolve pretty quickly right so mm-hmm. once once someone says the f word then we're gonna say it a lot in movies in yeah. godfather and, and what have you but um mm-hmm. i don't even know if the f word's in the godfather <laughs> i'm not sure but anyways like these things yeah. evolve pretty quickly and then i don't but i don't know when we would have heard the c word in a in a movie before the exorcist i mean that's something to look up yeah. it must have been rare right yeah and and by c word you're 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 referring to candy bar um, <laughs> right the butterfingers that uh, that we're talking about um or like but actually to speak to that um and i think we talked about this before the idea that like over across the pond right in in the uk mm-hmm. um that word that word that we're going to hear in the next minute <laughs> is is pretty tame like compared to mm-hmm. it's it's like it's a word that's like used a lot more often it's not it's not as big a deal um in fact they use it uh you know as a noun and an adjective um and we're gonna we're gonna see and the funny thing is like well that's not funny but um like in a later minute <laughs> it's it's that minute it's that it's that big minute that we're that we're building up to uh folks um when Reagan says it and we, and we hear her say it and we see her face and it's all covered in blood. And she's like, do you know what she did? You're, um, it, she's, I I think we forget because it's the first time that we hear another voice come out of, uh, Oh no, maybe not the first time we hear another Mm -hmm, voice, but it's one of the, it's one of the first times we hear another voice come out of Reagan's mouth. And so we might forget that that voice is actually not the voice of the demon. It's supposed to be, burke dennings mm-hmm. who is british oh, yeah. and again like like in the book and i don't know uh, um, we're gonna have to watch him closely and listen to him closely in the movie while he's uh you know still around um he might be throwing the c word all over the place <laughs> so it it like it actually serves as a double whammy in that one scene you know do you know what she did because it's at once supposed to be a shocker for american audiences mm-hmm. like oh my god she used the c word but then also it's like oh that sounds very british that's like something a Br- oh yeah. like she's she's like uh imitating Burke Dennings. It's like in um in yeah. Australia now they say the C word a lot that it seems to be very frequent, like like, like it just kind of like means bloke or you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was gonna try to say I, I don't want to say it too much just in case. Some people really hate it in America. So if you're if you're from overseas listening, like why are you being so like like some people yeah. get very, very offended by it in America? Yeah, it is a word. Wow, we are tiptoeing around this word. <laughs> Keenan, Keenan, we we're hosts of the Exorcist Minute, and but no, okay, like this is this has actually been on my mind, folks. Like I'm the one who edits this stuff, so I'm I'm going back and I'm listening to all of our all of our audio, and I'm you know uh, cutting it down and I'm editing it, and. I'm realizing something about myself. So when you edit a podcast, you you hear what you sound like, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I am using my teacher voice all throughout this thing. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. Like, and I put the little explicit on, uh, you know, on our podcast episodes. Sure. And every single time, every single time I was like, it, the, the, the hosting site asks me, it's like, do you want to uh, give this episode or an explicit labeling? And I always think back about like, wow. Like if you listen to just me and I'm like, well, gosh, darn that darn <laughs> demon, you know, <laughs> he said, do you know what you did? Your hunting daughter. And I'm like, wow. Okay. What, where, where do I even land on this? Because like the movie is being very explicit, but like me, I sound like I'm talking about like an episode of uh, howdy doody. <laughs> and it's because and it folks, it is because, and I think, I think, um, uh, Keenan, you experienced this a little bit as well. Tell me if, if I'm correct, but like as teachers, we just kind of we censor ourselves because we're, you know, I work with like much smaller kids. So I, I, I don't know. I guess I've like uh, soldered off that part of my vocabulary. <laughs> no, I, I, I try to hold back a little bit because I have had some students complain about me swearing too much in class. Oh, re- oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I try to talk to them as I try to talk to these, you know, these adults, you know, because I teach grownups in, in college. Mm-hmm. I try to t- talk to them as if I would talk to them in the quad, you know, or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so but some so I, I try to become more more cognizant of what I'm saying, because because mm. I've gotten a couple of moments like, what the hell did I say? Or, you know, what the fuck did I say today? I don't remember that at all. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, it's it's so weird because I'm like, OK, I like 
I'm hosting a show about the movie The Exorcist, which is which almost got an X rating. I should be able to swear. Mm-hmm. You uh, should. You know, on Absolutely. This, I should. But Keenan, I've known this since the beginning, and every single time I do, and I'm listening to these episodes, I sound like a person who is not used to swearing, <laughs> and, who's, and who is trying really hard to swear, and I'm just like so so. At some point, I made the decision. It's like, you know what? Like, <laughs> I'm just not going to because when I do, it sounds like I'm trying really hard. Okay. <laughs> it sounds like a teacher who is trying really, really hard to swear. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I think that's where we are. <laughs> yeah. Next, next, next time, you got to work up your courage. You're going to swear in the uh, in the intro to the episode. So. Oh, yeah. We're definitely – when I'm quoting, it's not a problem. I'm like, because I didn't say it, you know, Reagan said it Mm -hmm. or Captain Howdy or whatever. Um, It's Dr. Klein. It's Dr. Dr. Klein said what Reagan said, what Captain Howdy made her say. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. I I think that's, that's uh, everything for this minute. Um, Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And yes, folks, we now have a listener group for the show on Facebook. It's called Compelling Conversations, an Exorcist Minute listener group. It's a private group, but just request to join and we'll let you in. Uh, and then you can be in here with us and you can talk about the movie, interact with us and fellow fans, uh, post questions, polls, memes, all that stuff. And of course, as always, if you'd like to leave us a message, our email is theexorcistminute at gmail.com, all one word and we'll be sure to read it. Lastly, if you like the show and you want to help us out, the best thing you can do for our new podcast that's just starting out is to leave a five-star review, and that'll help other people find us, and we can keep growing this uh, this awesome, excellent community. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I think that is our minute. Um, Keenan, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think I am, Lester. Folks, until next time, the, the power, power of Butterfingers, Butterfingers compels you. you.